As you know, we are all in on AI today, as seems to be the case in Washington, President Trump, Davos, a lot of tech companies, Google and more, as you heard earlier. One area we increasingly are talking about when it comes to artificial intelligence is healthcare and specifically drug discovery. And our next guest can shed some light on that. With us is Najat Khan. She is Chief Commercial and R&D Officer at the publicly traded $3 billion market cap biotech and drug discovery company, Recursion. It is headquartered in Salt Lake City. She joins us here in our New York studio. So great to have you here. It does feel like we have this theme. Um, first of all, tell us about your company and what you guys are working on. Absolutely. Um, you know, Recursion is really focused on, it's founded on the intersection of AI and bio coming together. And one of the main reasons for that is today, if you look in the healthcare industry, making medicines, 90% of those drugs fail in the clinic. So only a 10% success rate time and cost is too long and patients are waiting. So what Recursion is doing is leveraging AI and high quality data sets that are actually generated in our own labs at scale, automated web labs, in order to build fit for purpose AI algorithms that are then used to decode biology, to really understand what's driving the disease. Use generative AI to design molecules. Designing molecules that somebody who's a PhD organic chemist, mm -hmm. never considered before, and then using that to make medicines in the clinic. So today, we have 10 clinical stage and preclinical programs in the clinic across oncology and rare diseases, and over 10 programs in discovery, and 10 additional programs with partners like Roche and Sanofi. So real powerhouse in terms of not just the idea of using AI, but applying it to make medicines that are differentiated. For Is patients. it actually being used right now as we speak? Absolutely. Explain exactly how that's happening. So I'll and give some success stories. Maybe I'll share an example because it just makes it more real. Um, RBM 39 is a program, it's in solid tumors that's in the clinic. It's recruiting patients today. The concept that this protein, this target could be important in cancer came from these maps of biology that recursion creates. You're taking images of cells, applying computer vision and AI, and then actually you can discern what compounds take diseased cells back to healthy cells. So from that's where the insight came from. Second, we actually use generative AI, active learning, to design the molecule. One of the biggest challenges when you're actually trying to design the molecule is ensuring that it doesn't just work well from an efficacy perspective, but it's also safe. So that's the other thing. And here's the beauty of it. Wait, so it's being put to use though already? Like oh, on patients, absolutely. we're For, seeing like what you guys are doing, we're seeing it on patients. Absolutely, all of the programs in the clinic or in preclinical is using AI. And as an example, just the RBM39 program, which is in solid tumors, it takes usually about 42 to almost 50 months to get into the clinic, from an idea to get into the clinic. This took 18 months. 200, less than 200 molecules synthesized. Usually in industry, and I come from large pharma yeah. before, you're making three, four, five thousand compounds. So you're doing things better, faster, and the inside is a first in class mo molecule, which means nobody's come up with this before. The idea came from leveraging AI to create these maps of biology coupled with precision AI chemistry design to make the molecules. But as we've talked about, Najat, like the AI or the outcome is only as good as the data going in. And Absolutely. so some say that we're still kind of early in. I know there's a lot of data out there, but I would I, in the healthcare community, how do you ensure the kind of the purity of your data sets that your outcomes are really productive? That's such an excellent question. Look, I think even before we talk about AI, data is the differentiator and fit for purpose data sets. So at Recursion, we have about 60 petabytes of data that we have generated both internally and also partnering with partners such as Tempus and others. This is the difference. It's having a wet lab and a dry lab. So essentially you're generating the data, mm -hmm. using that data to train your algorithms, and you're going back and those algorithms as they get better are actually then predicting what experiments you should make. We call it the real world and uh, the world model and so forth. That is a differentiator because then you can have your algorithms be best in class. And a lot of this is proprietary data sets in Salt Lake in our headquarters that we are generating. And then on top of that, you're applying it around problems that really matter. This is the other thing that's really important. We don't just use AI for the sake of AI, but we use it mm -hmm. what, based on the pain points that leading to the 90% failure rate today, right? So what are those? Number one, 
understanding what's driving the disease. It sounds really simple, but it's usually not one protein. It's multiple things that are happening in our body. Maps of biology give you not just the pinpoint of what's driving the disease, but everything else that is connected to. Think about it as the highways that connect across our different cells and organs. The other is also using AI and machine learning to think about 10 to the 60th permutation is what you can have in terms of the compounds you can make. Mm -hmm. No human can actually think through that. So you're using AI to design the molecules all in the computer and only make the ones that you have conviction in. We heard Gary Ellison say yesterday that we could see a cancer vaccine, an mRNA-based cancer vaccine as a result of investment in AI. You're talking about tumors being targeted. What are the other conditions oh, that yeah. you think could be targeted as a result of AI and pharmaceuticals within our lifetime? Like, what's the world that we should be imagining for our kids and for our grandkids? Yeah, I and mean, for us, maybe in a few years. Well, that's the goal, because patients are waiting, and that's the reason why the bet and, and what we're doing. Here's what I would say. Oncology, absolutely. Uh, rare diseases, we also have programs in rare diseases, whether the underpinning of it is genetic mutations or other aspects. And this is, and also immunology, that's the next arc. And I want to emphasize immunology, because the immunome is what connects all of the different diseases, whether it's oncology, neuro, and so forth. The trick to it is the following, though. It's not enough to just have one data layer you need to have multiple data layers. So what do I mean? You want to have genetics. You want to have transcriptomic, which is how are the proteins, how is mRNA being transcribed? You want to have protein data. You want to have patient data, like the EHR, the claims. You it have to connect across all of those data sets, and that's what we're doing. So what recursion has is a multi-omics, multimodal data layer that we have generated, the six petabytes that I mentioned. That is quite unique, because you need that to be able to address biology from all of those different angles, oncology, immunology, so neuroscience. We only have about a minute or so left yeah. here. I know we could probably go on for at least an hour to write to, to talk a bit more about this. Um, you Your stock surged back in the summer of 2023 with a record rally following news of the investment from NVIDIA. That was more than one and a half years ago. Um, what's NVIDIA's role in all of this? Great question. That's, that's a big investment. And again, we only got about 45, 50 seconds. We talked about how data is really important and high quality data and AI algorithms that sit on top of that. Everything that underpins developing these AI algorithms and finding insights from the data is that you have to have exceptional supercomputer uh, capabilities. And by the way, the one that we've built, Biohype 2, with recursion and uh, with the NVIDIA in collaboration, is the fastest supercomputer in the life sciences industry. 35th in the world, fastest in life sciences. Without that, we can't do these things at scale. So do you ultimately, again, just got about 10, 15 seconds, do you ultimately hook up with the big drug makers? Do they access your technology, or how does this Yeah, we have partnerships with four pharma companies, large Sanofi, Roche Genentech, Bayer, Mark KGA, uh, with multiple programs across oncology, immunology, and neuroscience that we're partnering on. Well, stay in touch. Love to hear more as you guys um, build out and continue your build out. Uh, Najat Khan, Chief Commercial and R&D Officer at uh, the publicly traded $3 billion market cap biotech company, Recursion, joining us right here in studio.